Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for the space to do this presentation. My name is Gustavo Garcia, as was already mentioned, and I will talk about the spatial temporal analysis space, or STAS for short. This is uh, one of the results of my PhD research, which was concluded earlier this year. About the motivation to do this work, well, the technological advancements have uh, led to an unprecedented abundance of geodata, and this presents a unique opportunity to better understand natural and artificial processes. But at the same time, this presents a challenge for analysts that need to make sense of the data. In this context, geovisual analytics produce a synergy between the analytical capacity of humans and the storage and processing power of computers through visual interfaces, which facilitates making sense of the data. In this domain, most of the research has focused on developing transformation algorithms, visualization, and interaction techniques. But little attention has been given to the support of collaborative analysis. And collaborative analysis can bring broad and varied perspective and knowledge, which can produce broader and deeper understanding of the phenomena. So the motivation for this work was actually to support collaborative analysis on geovisual analytic platforms. The result is STAS, and what is it? Well, it's an approach for long-term distributed asynchronous collaborative analysis. So this is a bit different from what was presented before, because instead of being all together, I assume that they are not in the same location and they are not working at the same time. Now, why is this the case? Well, first, because this was identified uh, was, uh, as one of the big challenges uh, based on literature review, but also because it was needed for the study case of the research, which is um, the monitoring and control of the olive fruit fly in Andalusia, Spain. This is an overview of the system in which field technicians uh, provide with observations about the monitoring and control activities, and these are combined with other relevant data sets, processed and stored in a geodatabase. The contents of this geodatabase can be analyzed collaboratively by stakeholders using a visual interface. This is how the visual interface looks like. This was designed based on users' requirements, and it allows to access the data in a three-level hierarchy. The first two levels are the year and the week of the year, which are located in the top part of the screen. And when they are selected, the map component shows the spatial distribution of the phenomenon. And this component also controls the last level of the hierarchy, which is the locations. If the analyst select locations, uh, the system will show detailed data in the form of charts, different types of charts. For example, here we can see a line chart and also a radar chart. And in addition, the interface includes components to allow uh, analysts to collaborate. In the following slides, I will talk about this part. Well, at this point, it's important to mention that there is a maintenance option behind the design of this system, and is that in data sets that cover large spatial and temporal extensions, there are subsets of the data that represent features of interest. These features are domain specific, and for example, in this case, we can talk about population outbreaks, population collapses, among others. And based on this assumption, the central concept of this task is the analysis space, which is a container for a feature of interest and the contributions to make sense of it. These contributions can be messages, can be annotations, can be stories, if they are using storytelling, etc. The system has two working modes. This is called the overview, in which the analyst can explore the whole data set, the existing analysis spaces, and also identify new features of interest and create analysis spaces for them. In this view, as you can see here, the analysis spaces are color coded, which enables the analyst to easily understand what is the spatial, temporal, and thematic component of a feature of interest. 
When an analysis space is open, the feature of interest is highlighted by applying partial transparency to everything that is outside of the spatial temporal boundaries. The idea uh, or the aim of this is to focus the attention of the analyst in the feature of interest, expecting that they will contribute sensible uh, information to make sense of the feature of interest or to better understand it, and in the long term, to better understand the general phenomenon under study. Here, um, or in this working mode, the analyst can explore the data, specifically the data that is part of the feature of interest, have access to its description. And by the way, uh, side note, based on what uh, was mentioned before, this interface is in Spanish, because the application was in Spain. So everybody was native speaker. Um, so we have the description of why it is considered a feature of interest and why it is important. Then we have links to other analysis spaces. Why? Because the idea is to build a knowledge base in which, for example, if this is a population outbreak, the analyst can easily jump to other population outbreaks that probably were identified by any other of the analysts in the system. Then they can compare whether this event happened in very similar, slightly different, or completely different uh, weather conditions, but also to use the previous contributions, meaning, for example, a discussion about that event, and see if it has or it can provide some information to make sense of this one. Inside this mode, the analyst also has collaborative techniques, for example, chat, forum, storytelling, any tool that is uh, useful to collaborate specifically, as I mentioned before, in a distributed and in a synchronous manner. In this specific case, the stakeholders ask for a question-based forum. So they can post several questions around one feature of interest and discuss. At some point, they can decide to discard the question because it wasn't really relevant for the analysis, or they can close it writing a conclusion. So uh, in the future, they know what was the reason for this event or how was it analyzed by all the participants. This prototype was tested by seven stakeholders in Spain. There is uh, one researcher, one authority, uh, authority representative, and five field technicians. From this uh, testing, they concluded first that the prototype is uh, very easy to learn and to use, that it is a very useful tool for the monitoring and control of pests, and also that they would like to see it uh, becoming a production system to support their activities in day-by-day -day basis. They also identify some things that need to be improved. For example, uh, one of the first things they noticed was that it is not easy to decide on the spatial temporal boundary for a feature of interest, simply because there are some features that don't have a, a well-defined boundaries, which is expected. It's normal in nature to have that sort of behavior. Another thing that, uh, that they asked for was a more flexible way to navigate between analysis spaces. So for example, keep track of the jumps between analysis spaces, being able to jump to any of them at any time, and also to open simultaneously several analysis spaces to allow better comparison and to take advantage of previous contributions. Um, well, ah, also, it was something unexpected because um, the prototype was based on their requirements, but at the end, this question-based forum was uh, seen as a very restrictive way of collaborating. Which challenges were identified by the end of this uh, development and also testing? Well, we need to do an actual full implementation of the approach because this was a reduced version of the approach itself. And we already know that there will be a challenge that will arise from this full implementation. If we offer several collaborative techniques, there is a need to provide tools to synthesize the contributions from them. And that is not a trivial task. Uh, it is also needed to do a long-term testing, for example, a full production cycle. In the case of, the, the, of Spain and the olive fruit fly, it means one year at least. 
and also it's necessary to test uh, the prototype in other application cases. From the feedback, the stakeholders already mentioned that they can see this prototype working well in the different uh, pests and diseases they, they monitor and control. So thank you very much for your attention and questions are most welcome. Thank you very much, Gustavo. So um, are there any questions? Yes? It looks very interesting. You, you showed two types of plots. I was wondering whether the system also supports other visualization and analysis tools uh, natively or whether you're planning to add support for, yep. for other tools? Or? Well, as, as was mentioned, and I think it's a, good, uh, it's a really good question, the overview mode is mainly intended for data exploration. So the current version already has five types of uh, charts from which you can change the visualization. If, for example, if you can change actually the, the layout and have more uh, uh, charts. But also, for example, something that I didn't mention because of time, is that you can see that there are two different types of data here. The actual observations that are the is point uh, data, but also there is uh, this uh, continuous data that uh, includes environmental data, weather data, topographic data, and also the output of some statistical models. So you have tools uh, up there where you can change which is the active layer. And then you can explore the data that is um, provided by them. You can also change the variable that you are analyzing and the color schema that you are using. And also to change the representation on the, uh, on the charts. So there are different tools that I couldn't mention before because of the time. And this is the part of exploration, the overview. In this part, you also have, uh, and I didn't mention, on the top, a button to create uh, new analysis spaces. So for example, I'm just making it up. You analyze that here there was a sudden population uh, collapse. So you can draw another rectangle, describe what is uh, what you are seeing there, and then it will create another of these uh, analysis spaces, and you will have tools to analyze it. And in a full version, because I also need to mention these links can be built uh, from two different perspectives. The analyst can do it manually, just because humans are good to identify related phenomena. So they can say, okay, I think that this is related to that thing, and create the link. But also the impression is that there is a processing engine that can compare the data containing each of the subsets and decide whether the data is similar. So suggest that that should be linked because it can provide uh, information to the analyst. And the other thing is that when you are in analysis uh, mode, the definition of the approach is that you will have different types of uh, collaborative techniques. The initial idea was to have some storytelling with annotation and snap, uh, snapshots, which is a very common combination of techniques for uh, visual platforms. But when it was discussed with the stakeholders, they, find, they found it uh, very complicated. Then they asked for something very simple and they say, I would like to see this. I have an understanding of it. And I want to just ask a direct question that will guide the discussion that I want to have about this feature of interest. So that was the reason. The only, or the only thing that they asked is that they can have multiple questions for the same phenomenon. So they can um, address it from different perspectives. But yeah, in this version, there is only this type of collaborative tool. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, very interesting, a lot of potential, clearly. Uh, maybe we can discuss later uh, during, during uh, the drinks part. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.